security. Um, the people who protect, it was an agency that was formed after 9-11, um, just to make sure we're good from like terrorist threats and all that. Really? It's a very new thing? Like since 2001. Hmm. 2002. Um, Al B. Shore says his new documentary will reveal how he ended up in the coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. What? What can that possibly mean? What? I thought something had to do with Diddy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what just what happened? What just happened? Yeah. Mm. What do you think? Was it like a drug related situation and. He was being trafficked. Well, there was some sex, not sex trafficking, but drug trafficking happening. <laughs> I don't know. What is I'll be sure talking about? Yeah, I'll be sure to tell you guys what <laughs> happened in my new documentary. Like, as a person who works in documentary space, I'm kind of sick of everybody having a documentary. Um. So you think it should have like a short film? Um. I just don't know that everything is truly a documentary. Like you're, I guess so you're documenting what's going on behind the scenes or whatever, but it's just like, also it's like, but who cares? Like, are you going to go see an Albie Shore documentary? Uh, if the buzz get out, cause I wasn't planning on watching the uh, quiet on set. I definitely plan on watching that. I wasn't planning on watching yeah. it. But because the buzz. The buzz is loud. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was one of those things kind of like, I was like, I think I need to like be in the right mindset to mm -hmm. watch that. I just imagine. It's, it's a like, lot of documentaries. I'm like, I have no desire to watch this. Uh -huh. But then it gets loud. Like the one documentary I always sticks out is, I think it's called, I think it's, I think it's the title alone grabbed me. It said, do I talk gay? What? That was a documentary. Yeah. And it was like, we explored the gay accent. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was like, all in. I was in. I was like, where did this But accent like, who from? produced it? So, like, also, I think this is my group with documentaries. Like, anybody and everybody on YouTube will put up something and be like, this is our documentary. And I'm like, who are you? And like, what? Like, a documentary isn't something that's slapped together. Like, you. There's like series of interviews and research and mm -hmm. experts and like there's real research and archival stuff that goes into like right. putting together a documentary. So like sometimes I'll be like, but like what are your sources? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like or is this just you putting out propaganda about yourself or I don't know. That's my, it's, my I'm sorry guys, it's called Do I Sound Gay? All right. Let me um, see it. So Netflix. It's a Netflix documentary. Huh. Yeah. And I'm gonna see who produced it because you're asking that. Obviously, this guy was narrating it. He is a gay man, but let's see who produced it. Um. I think you actually watch more documentaries I and do. true crime than I do. I do. I love documentaries. You know, especially if something is like I I'd never heard of, mm -hmm. or um, there's one that came out that um, God, what's it called? It was like uh, I'm mostly harmless. Have you heard of this? No. One? I'm mostly harmless. Uh huh. They call me mostly harmless. That's the name of Wait, the Wait, is that a new one? About like the guy who was like camping yeah, and yeah. that looked good. That yeah, looked good. Buddy. Yeah. Oh, they the way yeah. who, whoever and direction, direction of the director, obviously, is imperative. It is amazing how you can shape a story, mm -hmm. hold the punchline, and let us have this movie journey. Until we get to the end, do you know what it's about? I think I kind of just from the trailer. I've only seen the trailer. Yeah, the trailer is just like, yeah, uh, I've came across uh, mostly harmless. 
Yeah. And then it was like, yeah, I see him over in the Appalachian, in the Appalachian Mountain. They were like, see, we spent the night. We spent. Right. Yeah. Everybody's seen this guy, but they didn't know his real name. Yeah. Right. And then he just ended up dead. Right. And then it was like, he died of starvation, but he had like a pack of food in his black backpack. Uh-huh. So it was like, how did he die? Uh-huh. He wasn't hungry. Interesting. Was he bitten by something? Was he hurt and couldn't move? Was it like a poison bug that froze his body? He couldn't oh, move. Yeah. So all these then it was like, well, we gotta tell the family how he died. He had no phone number, he had no wallet. I'm he in I'll off watch the it. grid. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch it. and yeah. then they were just trying to piece together this yeah. person. And then the fact that he was he was um, uh, dead for so long for like I think they say he's been dead for like two weeks in mm. in his uh, in his tent. Mm-hmm. They had to re. This is the first like five minutes. Mm-hmm. They had to re undo his de- de- decomposing face. Oh man! And then like CGI it to like, hey, who is this person? Right. It was, oh yeah, that's mostly harmless. Yeah. I have a picture of him. So now they took the picture and uh-huh. said, hey, who is this guy? To the yeah. to the locals. Yeah. So now the words getting out like, hey, who is this person? They're yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, oh man, he died. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Hey Zup. Hey Candace. What's up, Zup? Um, yeah. So what people don't realize about documentaries, um, and I'm gonna start the actual recording a little bit, but what people don't realize is that just like in television, like if it's a series, you're gonna have a showrunner. You have to have like the main person Mm -hmm. who knows how to shape this story throughout multiple series, or you just, you know, or you have a director if it's a feature Mm -hmm. who puts this together. It's a whole team. You have your producing team. You're pulling your story out, like who's pulling bits and pieces and like, oh, that's an interesting point. Mm-hmm. See who we can talk about that because this thing came up multiple times. Who would know about that? Like, it's like really like just piecing yeah. so many pieces, like parts of the story together and then like the best way to tell the story. I need to uh, connect with you to find so I can shadow somebody in there. In yeah. the, uh, show running. Show running entity. Hey, I have a friend who's a great storyteller. He wants to know if he can shadow you. I told him about you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can do it. I mean, Brandon Bricks is the guy's name. He's a gay guy. Who did the. Do I sound gay? Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, for those in the chat, what is your all time favorite uh, documentary that you enjoy? That grabbed you by the horns and said, Yeah, this is a fire documentary. Have you seen the Pepsi Where's My Carrier Jet? Carrier Jet. Oh. Uh I've I've heard I seen I seen the um the documentary. I hate I don't know. I don't know. I mean I said I'm sorry, I've seen the trailer. I don't know if it could if it could have gotten any clearer. On the trailer, the trailer was so straightforward. I hated it. I hate when the trailer shows me way too much. Yeah. And this and is up. You can correct me if you can correct me if you want to. Um, the the documentary trailer of that uh, film was called. Um, it it was something along the lines of somebody won. It was like if you drink Pepsi, you can win a. Uh, carrier jet, and then uh, they tried to renege the idea. Somebody won. They tried to renege the idea, and then um, they were like, "You didn't win because of this." And they were like, "No, technically, I did win because of this." And went to court. Oh wow! And it went super far. And they was like, "Pepsi, you owe this person wow. a, a carrier jet." Am I am I off with that? Because that's what I seen from the trailer. I was like, "Man, they told the whole story." That's crazy. Right. You gotta give me my carrier jet. Right, I remember that one. Yeah, what is your all-time favorite uh, carrier jet? <laughs> all-time <laughs> favorite uh, documentary, guys. Um, I really enjoy the 
I'm trying to remember the Fire Fest documentary because there's oh, two yeah, versions. Two yeah. yeah, yeah. That was just good and messy. It was great. Don't F with Cats was like. Don't F with Cats was fire, man. Yeah. Don't F with Cats was fire. It was a journey. It was a journey. Yeah. They found that dude. <laughs> they found him. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. And um, another one that is fire. Um, like what is her name? And it was it's a. I don't think I watched that one. You know what I'm talking about? It yeah. was about the little. It opens up with like dead woman, and it was like, and it was like, uh, who was this woman? And it was like, oh, it's uh Becky Hauser. And then you know, it's not the real name, but it's like it's Becky Hauser, and it was like, no, Becky Hauser died five years ago. Um, I don't, I don't know what this person is, and she was going by the, she was going by a different name, yeah. And then that just kind of branched out to a whole different like, who is this person? Is it, oh yeah, yeah, uh, you know, this person came from Arizona, Arizona. And it was like she just kind of like she was escaping, like life. That's crazy. And we had to figure out who this person was. What's the one um, tender swindler? Tender swindler is great. That was a quick movie, though. It was quick. Yeah, it was quick. And uh, that's the overarching deal because it was a big deal in the '90s. So the documentary was getting into the nitty gritty of it. Pepsi owes that man jet. To this day, they didn't never do it. How do you get away with that? <laughs> Same thing happened with um. Uh, if you if you look it up, uh, the Bulls, um. Had a guy who won a million dollars if he hit a half court short, a half court shot, and then uh, you know everybody got excited. You want a million dollars, you want a million dollars, and then all of a sudden they were, they had all these like stipulations of like you couldn't be uh, a former player, uh, you couldn't be uh, associated with anybody on the team. And they kept trying to figure out these like ways of getting out of it, and then it was like uh, you you couldn't be a former a former basketball player, and he's like, I played in high school, something like that. They had tried to get out of like, yeah, you, that's, that's what it was. Like, no, it's in the past five years. I haven't played high school. I haven't played basketball. It was something along the lines that they figured it out. And then uh, it got the word got out to the news, and then Jordan was like, hey, man, I got you. Wow. He didn't pay him. He was like, I'm going to put the heat on the on the owner's feet. Okay. And then they they paid him in, 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 in a gradual not a lump sum though that's wild like if you <laughs> you're like uh, uh, i think we was yeah you said the odds of somebody winning right so yeah. how they win <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy um uh the one about the mcdonald's monopoly game i didn't watch that when i heard that was good i didn't heard about it yeah. yeah there's so many great documentaries um yeah that's out there. The jewel, the one about uh Are you recording this. No, I was about we, to get up and record. We got time, don't we? Oh, okay. I was like, enjoying hanging with our people. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna definitely sound biased, but there's one called Big Vape that's really good. And it's about like the jewel and vaping. And it's on Netflix. Oh, you've seen it already, huh? Is is it because you produced it? I didn't produce it. My company mm -hmm. I actually had nothing to do with it, but my company um, produced it. It's one of our. It was great. It's got great reviews. Have you seen it? Yeah. 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 Here it is. Big vape. Big vape, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it was a great one. Also, kind of biased, but there's one called um, "The Disappearance of Share Height." which our company produced. And I never knew, there's a book called like The Height Report that's pretty much about like, I think it came out in the seventies about like women's responses to like being set, like sex and pleasure and household roles. And like the findings kind of like really 
pissed men off. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what do you what do you mean my my wife fakes? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know. And then she did a study on men, and it was like talking about like you know a lot of men feel lonely or they don't feel like they could talk about their emotions. Again, seventies, early eighties, and men just like lost it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean we feel like we can't talk? Well, or what do you mean a lot of men uh, have uh, affairs? My fr- my guy friends have never had affairs, and it's just mm-hmm. like them going in on her. Every time there's change, there's mm-hmm. going to be some restraint, some, some sort of resistance. Yeah, she got, like, the way they went in on her was just like, it was like heavy resistance, and to the point she was just like, forget this. But it's a actually really, it's a really good movie and question society and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So... It sounds biased, but it's actually really good, and it did really good in festivals and stuff like that. So. Mm. We were talking about earlier today, man. Just anytime, like I seen a I seen a documentary out called Manhunt. Not not a documentary. It's a movie out called Manhunt, and it is the story of is it John Wilkes Booth? John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth, the one who assassinated uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah, there's a movie out, and I was like, "This is the first time I've ever seen a a POV protagonist of <laughs> the killer." Mm. And hearing his side of the story was valid. You I'm not that. saying valid; it's just like he was like, "I like the way things are." I mean, I'm not again. I'm not pro. Obviously, I wouldn't be here. But it was just like, man, life has been great, and he's shaking stuff up, and then he gets killed, and then the story is like the protection of white supremacists of like hide this man, he right. is our savior. Right. He took out the person that's trying to shake some stuff up, and then he was like being protected by the Confederate of right. like, like, no, he ain't doing anything wrong. He, you're free. You're safe down here. I was like, oh, this is a great. This is a great angle. <laughs> Yeah, it's a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, never sympathize with John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, of course not. I mean, you don't never any sort of oppressor is going to feel the fur the the, the fury. Yeah. Um, just just like you know, any sort of you know new women having rights, there are gonna be some men is like, man, what is up with this? No, not they're going to. There are men still. Yeah, I mean, when it first happened, yeah. I'm talking about the very first time we should give women rights. Men was like, "Yo, okay, what is happening here? What do you mean rights? What, right. what do they want? They have say so. They can start, you know, working on, you know, having jobs and they can vote. And they're like, come on, right. this is a man's world." You know, and then of course you get like black people having rights. He's like, all right, all right. We let y'all go when it came to the women. But y'all are acting of, we used to own them people. Right. Now you want them to to live amongst us? We should give them rates, (laughs) rights? We should pay them? You want us to integrate with our children? Um. I'm gonna come back to that I know you. because now that triggered some things I want to talk to about today. So it's perfect. Um, one, we're matching. Look at us. Mm-hmm. You got the black. One. Yeah. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I got my locks up under this hat. You got locks up under the hat? Then we can't be Baldy Locks. Mm. This is the Baldy Locks podcast, Dion. It is. Welcome back to another episode of Baldy Locks. Of the Baldy Locks podcast. Remember the rat? Yep. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Yeah, I remember it. Um, anyway, I'm your girl Twilla Amin. I'm Diana. And uh let's get back into it. You mm-hmm. started off strong, you started off hot. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you were talking about people having rights and people like immediately reacting, just kind of like brought back the fact that like when things are when you look at everything in this country, it feels like everything can be boiled down to racism. Why is so and so racism? So um, Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of um, Transportation, was talking. You said trans transportation. I was like yo, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I was like trans. At least say transportation. Transportation. Like, what? So Pete Buttigieg had uh, was talking about like bridges and infrastructures, and he was 
talk to and he was like, and you know, some of this is tied to racism. And I was like, tied to racism? Bridges are tied to racism. So you go to look at like different states. I don't know, like if you've ever, um, like in New York, let's say New York state, there are areas where like their bridges purposefully are low, like the clearance is low. Um, and I've just always thought that was very weird. So like when you're shooting in New York, like my drivers would be like, well, I can't take this road because they have low bridges. I have to go on this road. And you're like, you don't have like enough clearance to get under the truck and have enough clearance to get under the bridge. And so basically mm. when it comes to infrastructure, I can't think of the man's name right off, but he was like, well, there are always going to be rules that overturn like certain policies when it comes to race or whatever. But infrastructure is hard to overturn. You can't overturn infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So let's build bridges that buses can't clear so that we there's no reason to bus black or poor students into our neighborhood. Oh, wow. This is an actually documented thing that he said. And so that keeps people off of, you know, from the wrong side of town mm -hmm. in their part of town. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of states adopted this. Yeah. And to this day, there was those low bridges mm -hmm. that it costs a lot of money to build bridges or right. to knock down a bridge or to do any changes. And it's just like, wow, low bridges because racism. What? Who mm -hmm. would have thought? Yep. Great. Just Brilliant. crazy. Brilliant. And we also talked about earlier, like, there won't be any change in anything that you're passionate about until the person who has power is affected by this, this bill. Yeah. Like you'd be like, Hey man, we need to get rid of crack in the black neighborhoods. We've been saying that for years. Get, get rid of crack. This is yeah. a crack epidemic. White people who had power weren't affected by this. They were not affected. It's like, Hey, Y'all shouldn't be doing drugs. We can get y'all a dare program, but we're not going to help you out with this situation. What can we do? We did like no, we didn't bring it. We didn't bring how, we you think we created crack? <laughs> you think we created guns and put it in the black communities? Yes. <laughs> but you know, and then you know, they they but when it came to Op opioids. Opioids. Oh, we got opioids. to stop this. Yes. This needs to stop. My daughter. Right. You know, now you got these people, these these aldermen and, <laughs> and senators and mayors. My child right. is addicted. You about to dose out that John. <laughs> yeah. Not John. <laughs> yeah. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like it's and and change is hard for people like. I just like look at the news, mostly shake my head, but like, you know, the city of Baltimore um, has been in the news recently. Um, I guess a lot of people didn't realize the mayor was black, the mm -hmm. young black you know that. man of Baltimore. Um, Baltimore's majority black. It makes sense. The black people came out and voted for the black mm -hmm. mayor mm -hmm. and he's intelligent and doing what he got to do. Um, various commentators, I won't say a majority of people, some people are out here a lot of Trump supporters calling him the DEI mayor. And if you don't know what DEI, that's diversity. Um, what is the E Inclusion? for? Inclusion? It's diversity. In, um, dang it, I don't remember the E. But diversity programs and inclusion programs for people across the spectrum. Um, you know, women, people of color, um, LGBTQ individuals. So it's all like, but the fact that they said, Baltimore's DEI mayor. Somebody called him the DEI mayor. And you're like, wait, do you know how DEI works? Do you just think people were like, um, he deserves to be the mayor because he's black mm -hmm. versus like the people voted for him because the rules of politics are the same across the board. And I just think like that's wild, especially how much people just hate diversity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anywhere, like any type of inclusion programs and i'm not going to go on the tangent i can go on that but I, that's I, hilarious you did you, you, nah, i can I, go deep I, know. I can go real deep yeah I, I hate that he is a black mayor uh pauls um i hate that this happened to his city 
And now people try to find ways of, you should have figured this out. You shouldn't have any low bridges. Wait, like, hey, man, that has nothing to do with low bridges. It has nothing to do. Like right. people are like the infrastructure. Um, Joe Biden said mm. he put money to infrastructure, but you're sending money. And I'm like, yo, yeah, the did. infrastructure was there. The bridge was fine. Right. What are you getting up? You just find it or finding a yeah. reason to go in. Yeah. This is why we can't have these black mayors, man. He's the reason why. He should have known, like, yo, this, this. He should have known about. I kind of this, this, this sounds bad. Uh -oh. I kind of thought this. I, I really, in my heart, was like, this is a terrorist attack. This is a terrorist yeah. attack, and I was like, there's no way this is this could have happened. And I was like, I was like, and I said to myself, I was like, the world's about to turn upside down I'm because so, yeah. I was like, this is another terrorist attack. They didn't figure out a way. To not this whole, it, 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 it could still very well much be right. a terrorist attack, and they're covering it up just to kind of like, oh, we can't. Right, not in this political. Yeah, season. not during this <laughs> season, man. Not right now. Oh boy, yeah. it's just like a tragic, like you know, like the the list of perfect things that happen, like the perfect storm that caused this situation to happen, like. Yo, I just, that, I can't even imagine, like, the freak accident that is that the bridge that you go across collapses. Mm -hmm. And then, like, to be part of that crew on that ship, mm -hmm. you like, we made the entire bridge collapse. Mm -hmm. But then to, so, like, you have the deaths, the trauma, and then to have commerce that can't get in and out of the ports yeah. and it's just like this affects like our ports it's like 50 million a day affects so much so much money there's so much in and out yeah, yeah. that's and crazy. It's, the water is i think it's at 50 feet deep yeah so you can't just like just get rid of the bridge and we can go back over it it's like no man you gotta really yeah it's a wrap on me and there's people there's boats there's just still in there yeah people on the outside trying to get in yeah and it, and it it's it's one of those things of like it it, it wasn't like oh we almost hit the bridge it was dead smack on on the uh the yeah. pillar yeah it wasn't like it went out and was like ah we're gonna hit it like you know the yeah. Titanic yeah was, uh, we about to scrape against it it was no. like bang, right yeah. on yeah and it's only going nine miles an hour nine knots it's different what's nine knots I'm not a sailor. But I think it's okay. Google. <laughs> what are what is nine knots? <laughs> you know, hour? What do you say? Per minute. Sorry, I don't understand. Man, just a little bit faster. Ten, 10 point, point three five seven. Oh, it said nine knots. Yeah, just a little okay. bit faster. Oh, I thought it was saying like a knot is ten point three. I was like, yo, that's understand. a lot faster. Just a little bit faster. Okay. What up, Spicy? What up, Spicy? Who's saying knots? Sailors, they use it. But why knots versus miles per hour? Listen, like why other country, why we don't use, like they're in Europe talking about, who says miles? Yeah, kilometers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kilometers. Yeah. I definitely said that in, in, the, in the script read. You know, I was like, I said it with loud and, loud and proud. I heard kill I'm from the south, so I hear kilometers. I don't kilometers. hear people I don't hear people say kilometers. Kilometers. But yeah. it is kilometers, but yeah. We are about 10 miles, 10 kilometers. Well, that's a kilometer. We're about 10 kil kilometers outside of the kilometers of the okay. Ah, I definitely said that wrong. Yeah, I think it's just I hate point. that content and content is spelled the same. <laughs> Um, it was a it was a, a caption uh, popped up and I was like, why can I get what they're trying to say? <laughs> it was content the whole time. It, I can't think of how they worded. It. I was like, they really jacked up. Like, content. Con what type of? Like, it was, I can't think how they said it. I wish like, you, yeah. I wish you had a screenshot. screenshot. I was like, this this is. I was like, this person. I was about to chew them out in the comment section, and I was like, oh, yeah. I like this ice for content. Is it with an A or it's, yeah? I'm like, Google, is it content? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Spell the same exact way. Damn it. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, like, reading read and read don't ever get you? Reading read, uh, you know, you, usually the set up words kind of. I read a book. I read a book. Read and read. I read a book. I read a book. I she read. read a book. I read books. He read a book. She reads books. I guess because I think the get, setup. Yeah, the setup, setup kind of helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. You know we have to do it. Okay, let's do it. Take that. Take. All right. Your boy Diddy. Did he do it? Did he do it mm -hmm. or did he not? I I no matter if he did it or didn't, I hate that it's being exploited this much and his legacy is falling apart. Even if he is 100 percent innocent, people are not going to forgive this situation at all. It is his legacy now. Nobody it, wants to work with him again. Right. Like he stepped out from a vault. But yeah. it's like a long list of, it's not like, did he do it? It's like, did what he did do he all do? those things? Right, right. Because there's a lot coming, like, you know, like there's sex trafficking, which is um, why his, I think the reason that he was able to, his places were raided. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's like, drug trafficking and guns and um, assaults and like, mm -hmm. you know, like so many things, the list is long and like people are like, well, I tried to tell you or this yeah. ain't new. Yeah. And nobody's like, nobody's like, nah, he wouldn't do that. Right. I mean, <laughs> we live in a society, man. You, you latch onto something, man. People will be like, do you go up to, do you just like how Peter, Denied Jesus, people were avoiding Jesus at all. Right. Like calling Diddy Jesus. But when they see somebody getting crucified publicly, people are like, I'm not going to dive out there and block that bullet. And say, hey man, hey, hey, he he's a good man. He wouldn't do that to me. He wouldn't let, it's like you, you you're like, hey, this dude is a rapist. He is a pedophile. He is this. You can be like, hey, hey, hey. Right. Listen. This dude has saved children from Afghanistan. I've seen him, uh, you know, yeah. nobody's not going to yeah. dive out there and, and talk true. about the positive. But I also feel like, I mean, like, we could say he contributed a million to Howard University, HU. Yeah. Um, so when you do it? Huh? When you say it? I just social, said it. On social media? I just said it. Okay. But I'm saying at the same time, two things can exist. Two things to, can be true. They, they both can be true. Mm -hmm. And but that sounds like you defended him though. It's like that's hey, a fact. He gave a million dollars to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying yeah, I'm not on his side. What I'm yeah. saying is like if you just like, hey, I'm sorry what happened with Diddy. Uh, my first encounter with him is he donated a million dollars to uh, Howard University while I was there, and I was a fan ever since. If you just, just said that, which is your truth, it sounds like you being like, oh. You defend, so you do realize yeah. that there's victims attached. Right. To that million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like, I think um, my whole point is, like, I feel like, I feel like in this industry and, like, also, like, Black social media gossip, they have some, like, true intel somewhere. Because, mm -hmm. like. These things have been, this is like, none of this is like new information. None of us are like, oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Clutching my pearls. It's like, oh, okay, well, and so finally, like, you know, like, it's like, I've heard these rumors for years, that type of thing. Um, and I say that thinking about like, um, oh man, who was it? Like, I don't know. I just feel like so often, like, you hear these like rumors, oh, like, um, with like Jay Z cheating on Beyonce, I felt like there was rumors for years that you was like, well, you know, Jay Z still do so and so, like you know, mm -hmm. like, and me being, I'm like, nah, he not stupid, he would never do that. And then Beyonce's like, well, Becky with the good hair, this Jolene girl got it, you mm -hmm. know, like whatever. And so it's just like, how do y'all 
be known. Do y'all really, your inside people really be spilling? Yeah. <laughs> See, it, 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 no matter what, this is kind of piggybacking off of what you said. Even if Jay Z 100% cheated on Beyonce and the girl who came out was like, hey, Beyonce was cool with this. Like, we all signed the NDA. We're all fine with it. If we got that confirmation from this random girl, Becky, uh -huh. and the court of public opinion will not allow it. Yeah. Girl, you better than this. You are a queen. Like, leave this man. You you deserve better. It's like, hey, hey, Beyonce, like, I agreed to this. I'm not saying Beyonce specifically in Jersey, yeah, but yeah, anybody, yeah. any sort of relationship that they was like, hey, we have, we don't have a traditional relationship. We allow outside sources. We um, we take breaks every like the whole Jaden and Will. They was like, you Will, you are in danger, bro. You are allowing this woman to be sleeping with other men, and like you can leave. Like, I'm never leaving this woman. It's like, I don't want to hear your story no more. You are toxic. <laughs> Jada is toxic. And it's like, yo, yeah. if this is our marriage, this is what we agreed to. I hate the court of public opinion. I, and I know I know, Will definitely wants to go back on when he was like, I remember there was a time I was like, when you are a celebrity, you want to kind of be a mystery. You want to kind of stay in the back and just yeah. like, let people think what they want to think. And he was like, you know what? I think this right here is a better platform to be on. I'm going to be on social media. And then you know I, I can be able to promote and make more money, and that that, that shit's backfiring on him right now. Yeah, I mean, like and he's slowly, slowly like repost like posting content. Yeah, again. after the slap. Yeah, but I feel like yeah, I feel like Jada took the heat. But Jada talks a lot. But <laughs> Jada took the heat for a lot of stuff. But to say yeah, the court of public opinion is heavy, which is why like in this day of social media like even though like the rule of the country is innocent until proven guilty it's so hard like you know like how they would say like people would request can this trial be in a different city because we feel like the jury is going to be you know what are you talking about which which court or just in general like when you go to court people can um request that the trial be transferred to a different city where mm -hmm. you know like the jury won't That's be tainted favoritism. yeah and yeah. Then it's just like but in this day and age of media, media and news and social media, it's all right there in your hand. You could be what what um what were you talking about earlier when you had said, Hey man, if you disagree, you don't have to say nothing. I don't know, I don't know if that was worth us bringing back up again. I forgot what you were talking um, about. Um, yeah, so social media. Um, I was on, I think Dwayne Wade had posted that um he and Gabrielle and Zaya were on a college tour and, you know, they were just posting pictures from their college tour and somebody posted about like in comments, Hey, what dorm will he be in? Does he know that he's a boy? Like stuff like that. It was just like very hateful, mean mm -hmm. stuff that people responded to um, like with commenting on this child's parents right. <laughs> post and just like why you don't have to say anything yeah you don't have to agree with whatever lifestyle or choice that this individual made mm -hmm. but like you don't have to say anything you don't Nothing. have to bully a child yeah. like shut up it is wild it is wild that people are like i need me a burner account so i can troll I need me a burner. How account. miserable are you? <laughs> That's crazy to think. Like, yeah. I do have several accounts, but they are relevant. Yeah. As in Dion, Lactose, and LTE. Right. Those are my accounts that I actually use, that I actually promote and, right. and push. So so when you like, nah, I got to be Charles Clover, and I'm going to... <laughs> I can't be mean as myself. Yeah. So if I get blocked, I'm totally fine with that. But I'm going to have a burner account so and I can go should, in. There should be a reverse investigation. There should be an app to be like, where is it? Who is this person? Right. Who is this IP address? Right. Where, is, where was this posted from? Because I need people to be like, I'm glad Instagram is, is, is trying to create some sort of filter. But at the same time, it's like, 
you're you're banning the wrong response. One time, uh, one of my comedian friends posted, I was like, bro, you kill it. And they was like, this is not go against. But this goes against. Yeah, this goes against. <laughs> our, oh, God. Um, and, you know, and, 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 you know, something was like, like it, it was something along the lines like, if this happened to me, it was like a spider or something, man, accidentally swallowing a spider. It was like, Ugh. I will ask, I will beg myself to die if this is not going again. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Suicide is not a oh my gosh. frowning yeah. here. Yeah, that's why other people be like unalive, like yeah. trying to get around. Um, certain it things. really ruins punchlines when you in Instagram. You try to say a comment like, "Yo, I hate that you said this." Oh, 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 hate, hate speech. <laughs> you, got, you can't say that. It's like, oh god, I really dislike that you said this. <laughs> hey, you, you on the line, brother? You, you on the cusp right. of being removed from this platform? Um, you know, like I just hate. I just feel like, and I probably said this so many times. I'm like, how miserable are people that like people will mean comment on anything? Like yeah, there's yeah. there's like this, sometimes I follow I follow different like crafty, like look what I thrifted and look what I turned it into. And like this one girl took like a vase that I thought was ugly and then like repurposed it and crafted it to look like something that she would have bought at Pottery Barn. And people in the comments were like, that's so ugly. Why would you do that? Why would you ruin this? Yeah. Uh, that's not even that good. Like, you don't need to have an account to do that. Like, right. the comments were going yeah. in. And I'm just like, yeah. it's her her craft. Yeah, like, what the page. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't like it, like, like, are you that miserable? I think they're not even talking to the person. They're just like, they're in the crowd doing this. <laughs> right. Cause they, right. they're not, I'm not talking to this person specifically. It's like, it's like, I need my comment to stick out. I want my comment to have the most likes. And it's like, I'm afraid to say it to the person specifically, but just like, and it's like, Hey, don't lose your day job. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, sir. No, no, no. You know, I'm just playing y'all. It's all love, man. I just wanted to say, man, I didn't, I, I, I'm a huge fan of your work. Go back in the shrubbery. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you can't go back in the shrubbery because you, you know a lot of times we go into a like a, an explore page that's going viral. Yeah, you'll see like a million you know views and like a hundred thousand comments. You're like my little comments going to blend in with the rest of them. It's like yeah, don't do that, bro. You look like you musty, and then your your vid, your yeah. comment get the most likes. Yeah. Like, hey man, first of all, block you. Be like, oh, no, 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 me huge fix. <laughs> You've already blocked yeah. because you went viral for all the wrong right. reasons. Right. Yeah, man. It's, it's I can't say it's hard. I if if I me being a content creator, I avoid my thoughts. If it's my friend. Uh -huh. I would definitely say something because it's my friend. And in the comment section. Yeah, in the yeah. comment section. Okay. If it's my friend, like, yo, you wild, yeah. please. Like, I, I'll make fun of them. You look disgusting yeah. in that outfit. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to swing on you next time. You know, I'll say stuff like that because I know this person. But a lot of times, a lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know the fact that I know this person I'm making fun of. And they start attacking me. Oh, God. The amount of people that has chewed me out for Tony. The amount of people that has chewed me out for Kev. Yeah. And it's like, I forgot. You don't, don't know. They don't that. know that. They just think I'm trolling. Yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, I remember one time I said something like, uh, something along the lines of when Tony had said something, and I was like, hey, man, not a fan of your comedy, bro. Just stick to politics. Clearly. A joke off of how yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. Clearly, Tony don't talk about politics. Yeah, clearly, and people like first of all get off this page. Oh God, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot they just think I'm I'm trolling, but yeah. he laughed at it. What do you um? So you being a content creator and like a comedian and frequently on podcasts, I know. But how do you like deal? Do you is there ever a reason to go in the comment section? 
Never a reason. Never a reason to go in the comment section. You try your. I wish I could turn off my comment section to be seen. As in, like, people can comment, but I don't need to see it. Yeah. Y'all can comment, talk about it all you want to. I don't need to see it, especially if it goes viral. Because people don't like the group think. Even if it's like, this is hilarious. Yeah. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. It's like, yeah, everyone else is saying it. I got to figure out a clever way of saying something that's, that's not this. And it's like, this would be funny if you had a shirt on with your fat ass. Like, people find yeah. ways of like, I want to say it's funny, but I got to figure. Yeah. Why is that in the background? Like, who, right. who watches Turtles in the background? Like, I remember what, what our viral so and so shirt, uh, um, uh, our wording or something, yeah. I can't think of what it's called. That's time we went viral. Instead of just enjoying the content, People was like, for anybody who's wearing a shirt called Fusky, I wouldn't trust anything he would say. It's like, oh. Right, right. I'm like, yeah, for somebody who don't know how to spell hustle correctly, clearly this is a pun off of LTE, lactose entertainment. Don't trust Dion for nothing. He don't know how to spell hustle correctly. Not with the It's a being... different font. Right. <laughs> I was like, not it being in a different font. If you haven't caught on that LTE is in hustle, lactose entertainment, you're the problem. Well, our name is not big enough for it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not like Nike. Right. But the fact that's a different font lets us know we were strategic. Strategic. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, people in the comments, I mean, like in the brief time that I've been part of something that has gone viral or whatever, like, mm -hmm. I might read like a few or I'm like, okay, this is heading in the wrong direction. I'm not doing this because Twilla is sensitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, so, and I'm like, I can't let that stop me, yep. but I'm not, I'm not partaking in that back and forth, back and forth at all. Like yeah. if you can feel a way, you can feel whatever way you want to feel about me. Yeah. I just don't have to read it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people are so like cool with just saying whatever, like yeah. I remember there was one, um, when we were still doing rap back in COVID and we were talking about like the vaccine and stuff. And then somebody was like for two seemingly unhealthy people. And I was like, you know what? You let it go. You know what? But what's funny is like, I have siblings. So my sister was ready to go on in on somebody mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I'm sorry. What did they say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did this idiot say? Yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't see that. But yeah, it was just definitely like um, the comment section, man. It's just not good. It is not my cup of tea, but it's a great time when you when you're on the outside looking in. When you're looking at, it, you be like, "Yo, have you read the comment section?" Now, sometimes, like when it's like, like my auntie sent me this photo, uh, this video of like a truck somehow hitting a ditch and it flipping up perfectly against yeah, this house. Know. And that comment section was like, now that's, that's, you know, perfect, like curbside delivery, second floor delivery, like yeah. stuff like that, clever stuff like that, right. where it's not like attacking anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie. There are some things like sometimes I'll be on like I, one of the sites is a fashion site that I follow and they put like somebody's outfit up there, like for the red carpet. And I was like, I don't know if this is cute. Yeah. Let me yeah. go to the comment section because my fashion could be off. And I was like, okay, they're tearing. Yeah, yeah it's not cute. All yeah. right. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not going to hop in and be like, right. yeah, you're right. This is. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And a lot of times we'd be, we'd be so messy when it comes to the comment section. We'd be like, I want to say something, but best friend, what are your thoughts? Or <laughs> mm, what do you think about this? There was a. Um, there's a video I sent you yesterday uh, about a song. Is it, have you remember the song? I didn't remember that. I didn't remember the song either. <laughs> I didn't remember the song either, but instead of commenting in the comment section, I was just like, yo, yo, I've never this? seen this song before. Right. 
And you, you got to just have, that's how you got to handle stuff, man. You see things that's inappropriate, you send it to your friends, man. Yeah, like, I was like, there's some decency and order and, like, ragging right. on something. Like, you don't have yeah. to, like, be just all out there. Like, I don't know. I just feel like the world is kind of, like, at a point man, where it's just, know. like, mean for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Hold on, what are we talking about? Moyo up in here. Kick clip from the year. We uh, in here? Yeah. What's good, fam? Lay. And I'm just going to point right here to this. If you're not, if you don't get notifications, then you missed out that we're going live. And then you missed out on the conversation that's going. And these people are clearly talking. Uh, there's conversations going right now in our live. So make sure you yeah. hit that subscribe and that notification bell. Yeah. See how I did that? Like an inter commercial. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. Mm hmm. And also, uh, this is something that was unprepared, but I'm going to kind of surprise Twills a little bit. Oh, um, <laughs> but today, March 30th, I've made a declaration. Can I say that? You can say that. It's a declaration? Yeah. Um, of losing a lot of weight. I don't have a goal yet. But I will say I would like to lose two pounds a week. I going to make an extra effort. I'm going to put this on wax. And I'm going to lose this weight with effort. And I'm going to be mindful on what I put, what I put in my body pulse. Um, and do the extra effort by avoiding my temptations of food desires. You wanna wake up with and work out at 5.30 in the morning? I'm going to wake up early in the morning to work out. It is a necessity to make it happen. Um, um, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, I did it on I did it on Daddy Issues last Tuesday. And I was gonna ask you about that. We'll if you mind, don't mind, because yeah, you were on Daddy Issues last Tuesday. And uh it's like a great conversation and it was also like a confirmation. Uh, do you ever feel like things are just like confirmation happening? Because um if you don't know, Dion on Daddy Issues, um, and you talked about like weight and weight loss. And this is also a conversation that we've been having as friends for the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, do you ever feel like, oh, this is a confirmation or it's time. Like this is, God, I hear you yelling at me. All right, I got it. Like that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I've done it several times. My body has yo-yoed up and down numerous times. It saddens me is because at this big age of mine, it doesn't fall off as easy. And also, when you don't have the right financial resources of turning down or accepting healthier options in life, you know, and you're tired, you're fatigued, you want a quick meal, meal prepping is a, is, is a prerequisite. Yeah. It is required in my life. Yeah. It is because it's like, I'd be working, I'd be editing, I'm like, I'm hungry. And you like, I can easily just go and stop at this Taco Bell. Yeah. I can easily, but it's like, you have to have that preparation of like- And Taco Bell ain't cheap no more. It's not me no more? It's not cheap no more. It's not? It's not as cheap as it used to be. It's not about being cheap, it's about eating now. Yeah. And it's about throwing it away. I ain't gotta cook. I'm eating and I can throw it away. You know, one thing my doctor suggested that what does your doctor worked, suggest? worked for me. Um, and I think you noticed it. Like I have a lot of, um, my doctor said, go to like Trader Joe's, get those pre-made salads. Cause I'm like, I'm a busy individual. I don't always have time to cook. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, set yourself up to win. Um, if you don't have time to meal prep, if you know, like if you are on a super busy week, Stop at Trader Joe's, get those salads. Now they only last about two or three days because they're super fresh. Mm. They have the expiration date on them. They're not going to last. Like if I go Sunday, I know that there's certain salads that I have to eat by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's like a couple of other, so then I know to get like another option. Um, and then I know what type of things to grab for a quick dinner. Mm -hmm. And that helps tremendously. Yep. It helps tremendously. And like my doctor said that, I'm like, I don't know why it took me so long to listen to her. But that's actually like. Because we thing. always want to get a big bang for our buck. We want to have stuff. Well, Trader Joe's is not expensive. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is as in like we want, uh, you said, I don't know why I never think about that. Because a salad, you know, like we have an expiration very quickly. Yeah. It's not like cereal or oatmeal yeah. or, or pancake batter. Oh, you know, cereal is if I only have cereal in my house, because if I had cereal in my house, it will be gone. I have granola in my house, but I don't have any milk. So I purposely know myself because it's like I was like, I, I cannot figure out a way to get a quick meal. Right. Um, so I have to have uh, I don't have sandwiches because I would not got a whole bunch of peanut butter jelly sandwiches or I don't have turkey. bread. You don't do the turkey sandwiches? No. I don't keep a lot of, I don't do a lot of bread. Like I'll go through seasons for sandwiches. Um, but I will do like an English muffin and mm -hmm. that's yummy. But yeah. my thing is sweet. So like you don't go, you don't keep it. And like, you're like, if it's not in the house, I'm not looking for it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if I want ice cream, I'm getting ice cream. If you're at your house, where's your ice cream at? What grocery store? Where do you find that? Because mine is right down that right downstairs. Right. I'll hop in the car. Wow. And go to CVS. Wow. They always have the butter pecan ice cream, the one on Sunset. That's the one on Broadway's hit and miss. Wow. You know what's sad? What is that drive? Mine is like three minutes away. Mm -hmm. That drive to get the ice cream is like that. That would do something to my head of like, what am I doing? And then, yeah, I'm like, it's especially or like, so then I know, like, for me, I'm like, if you're gonna go anyway, now I can get ice cream and that pint will last me. Like, I'm not eating that in one setting, mm -hmm. so it's not like I'm also not a person who's just gonna go through it like, yeah, immediately. So I can yeah. keep snacks in the house, yeah. And so, but good. my other thing is like, I have to figure out how to offset my sweet tooth. And sometimes that is going like cold turkey and not having sweets for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, or like going hard on smoothies until I wean and yeah. like wean off into, wean off into some, like not eating it as much. But I remember one time I seen something on TikTok and it was, you know, the oatmeal cream pies, mm -hmm. the little Debbie's. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody had took all the oatmeal pies and then squashed them into a ball and then like flatten them out uh -huh. and then cook them. And it was like the bed of like a big brownie. Oh, wow. And I couldn't get that image out of my head. I, I was like, I want that. So bad. Oh my gosh. I was like, cause it cause it was the cream and the oatmeal yeah. together. Yeah. And then they put it in the oven, they flattened it out, put it in the oven, and then it came out as they put ice cream on top of it. I said, oh, wow. I'm getting that now. And it was like like 1050. And I know that bodega down downstairs closed at 11. Yeah. And I went down there and I was like, hey, hey, hey. I was wondering about it. He was like, sorry, bro, we closed. And I was like, it's it's 10. Bro, they do that. Mm -hmm. Like it's tasted. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. I was like, come on. I just want. To, I, I can see it right there. Sorry, bro. I already closed the register. In my head, I was like, I could easily complain. But I was like, you know what? I'm about to go to Smart and Final. And I was like, no, nope, Smart Final's closed. And I was like, I gotta go around. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> and I was like, yo, wow. I can't believe I was really about to hop in the car and search for some oatmeal pies to create this dessert. Right. And I was like. I got a problem. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This is crazy. Like, like you know, the Ralphs the downtown. Yeah. You got to go like under the thing, get the parking validated. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, this is wild. So I'm, I'm glad I don't invest. And that was, that was. I say that mine. That was about like, excuse me, maybe five months ago. Uh -huh. Did I tell you the story? Uh-uh. Yeah. Five months ago, and I was like, now I was in the car, like 
I'm about to do this. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm tripping. I'm I'm yeah. not doing this. And I didn't I didn't and I got back out of the car and I was like, I'm just gonna have to go to sleep. I'm just going to sleep. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to sleep hungry. And then I told myself I, I just cannot invest in sweets. Anything that's going to pull me into a spiral, I cannot bring it in the house. You know, um, like little fruity candies, they don't do nothing for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a chocolate person. If it was some Snickers, yeah, Snickers or you know Hershey's or little kisses, I throw those back. I put those in my oatmeal. That's a little yeah. pop of color. I've been looking at like I've you know Instagram knows your algorithm like the algorithms know you. Mm-hmm. So because I'm on like a health and workout kick right now, yep. um, it will be showing me like I've been getting all these like different smoothie and protein snack things um, for like post-workout um, stuff. And I'm like, all right, guys, if you just wanted a milkshake, say that. Like mm-hmm. there is some stuff that's like, here's a oatmeal brownie uh, smoothie that you could drink. And I'm like, you're actually in it. So one thing that I might want is the Ninja Creamy. Like apparently this little Ninja makes ice cream. Like with like milk and it just start, the way it stirs oh, it, it, turns it. T- turns it into ice cream, and like so people have been doing a, like a lot of different different protein shakes and stuff with it. But there's like here's my protein Oreo chocolate Oreo something something, and I'm just like yo that's still sweet. It's like you and I don't have the same like mm-hmm. these people creating this don't have the yeah. same struggle. I do like I can't mm-hmm. do that like I'm a chocolate milkshake with Oreos yeah. in it sounds delicious. Yeah. And you can't tell me it's healthy. Yeah. You can't. Can I tell you something? What? You remember that time um, I left your house and I had the little, the pizza, uh, the little barbecue chicken pizza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like after hours. Yeah. It was like I left like at like midnight or something. Yeah. And it popped in my mouth like, oh. Now, all of a sudden, I'm hungry because I was fine just leaving. Yeah. I was fine just leaving and going to sleep. And you had turned down that pizza earlier. I did. Yeah. I did. And I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. Oh, no, this barbecue chicken pizza is good. CPK, and, baby. And then, and then driving home, I said, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And I was like, what's around here? I need something. And I drove right to Jack in the Box. I saw the bag in the trash can the next day. I knew exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm telling you my truth. Yeah, like because we, I mean, like I observed that, and because I know, and I know we have these conversations often enough that mm-hmm. we know each other. And I was just like, I see what went down. Yeah, I yeah. see what happened. Yeah. <laughs> With the Jack in the Box yeah. that had, I never. This is about to get darker. Oh, I never had. The fish challenge, which was amazing. I'm going it was right a, after this. It was a two for five. Oh. It was like a um like a fish slider. Uh-huh. Like a, you know, I don't know slider. What do you call them? Uh like a hot pocket or something? No, it's like we wrap it up in like a tortilla. Burrito? Wrap. Yeah, like a wrap. Okay. It's like a wrap, a fish wrap, fried, uh-huh. fried fish wrap. And the seasoning and the sauce was was par, just par. On par. It was just par. Just par. Not even on par. The sandwich was on par. But I can't go to Jack in the Box without giving a milkshake. Milkshake. Anytime I go to Jack in the Box, I gotta get a real, uh, a real ice cream. And it had it was it was the mint Oreo mint. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oreo mint milkshake. And I'm driving if home. If you don't know, like Dion's lactose intolerant, but can continue. Driving home, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so from that Jack in the Box that's on Mission Road uh-huh. to my house, I already took down the rat, and I had the smoothie. I mean, I had the shake halfway done. Uh-huh. I got here. It is one o'clock in the morning now. Yeah, I'm eating it like it's three p.m. Turn the TV on. I'm happy. My toes are doing like this. I'm eating, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. 
Here's the sad part. Uh-uh. What? And this is how the universe, I'm going to say God, slapped my hand. Uh-huh. So we, I am confessing, this is specifically for Moyo because she's on both, both ends of uh, the daddy issues. So right after we did daddy issues, they, so, you know, we do, we start taping daddy issues at 10 30 right mm -hmm. you know i do intermittent fasting um starting at 12 until like eight mm -hmm. right i don't eat from that time so in my head i was like oh man um they never have food in the lobby yeah but they're overlapping with a project with uh nerding is hard Not, okay was it nerding something with hippie yeah I don't know so she had a whole spread of food there yeah didn't have to eat it i didn't have to eat it but what they was rushing me so i did was i took uh a bagel and i scooped it and then i kind of you know did like that to kind of like because i they, yeah, yeah. You know, cream cheese so, I, so i scooped the i scooped the bagel with one half and then i grabbed it other side and i smeared it or, and kind of like turned it so it was evenly distributed uh -huh. So I went. So I went in and start recording it. They was like, "God damn, Dion, what's this bagel with all this cream cheese?" I was like, in my head, I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't even describe how I got the most cream yeah, cheese in it. Yeah. Um. So they kept talking about the cream cheese. Oh wow. Kept talking about the cream cheese. But in my head, I'm thinking like, this. This is going to go to about like one thirty. Yeah. Because we go over a lot. Right. I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna be hungry in there. So let me go and eat something real quick. So anyway, fast forward. It's about one o'clock, and I was like, I am hungry. I'm driving home, I already passed my time. I already do the intermittent fasting. I'm driving home. I was like, I want that jacket box. I want that jacket. I cannot stop thinking about it. But mind you, this is the episode I had said I'm going to change today. my life today. I get to the drive through. Sorry, sir. We're all out. Won't he do it? They said, uh uh. Stop and I was it. like, Stop that. <laughs> yep, yep. This is the day. This is the sign I need to change my life. Right. Yeah. Sorry, sir. We're all out. I said. Yeah. Wow. It's definitely moments like that. Like, and I felt that same feeling again of like going to the bodega, and it was like, no, sir. No, but keep going. I have, a, I have a problem. Yeah. No, it's really it's it's real. Like, I think I'm the person that has to check myself um, just because I'm like, okay, Twilla. Okay, Twilla. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to have this ice cream. Like, mm -hmm. what is the healthy alternative? Yeah. Figure it out. Like, what? go to sleep. Like, one time I was just like, <laughs> go to sleep. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you're not able to control this, good night. Yeah. 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 It's buddy. crazy. What are these people talking time, about? Let's see. Um, Dion, Dion don't want to be, don't want that hit hard hitting facts text again. Oh boy, <laughs> Is that uh, young deuces. <laughs> oh boy, we're all rooting for you and kicking your, um, uh, kicking your account, uh, kicking your butt accountability. It's honestly a mindset if people are making your meals. Let them know ahead of time your diet, your preferences and dietary limits. Good note. Um, also, it does help to always have my uh, my at the ready. M meals. Meals at the ready. Um, let's see. Also helps to stay full and satiated. Satiated. What's that? Um, protein is a very good way to be satisfied. What's we'll satiated? Satiated. I always thought that was hydrated, but I think I'm wrong. I'm fine with being wrong. You always sound like Bruce from the Nemo from Nemo uh, talking about food. Like uh, twelve to eight. How is that fasting? That's just overnight. Oh, he's talking about twelve p.m. to eight p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Not twelve midnight. To <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't eat before twelve. That's funny. Noon. 
in an after eight. That's funny. <laughs> um, spicy. She said, I'm glad you caught yourself. This is to your content and content situation. It would have been that cranberry cherry juice debacle all over again. <laughs> Out here in these streets is yellow. Uh, it's like a Rico case full of crimes, but it's all one person. Yeah, that Diddy trial is crazy. It is deep. I was listening to the thing. I was like, wow, okay, what? Um, Maya said she had to throw elbows in the comments earlier. Don't do it too much, but I was irritated. <laughs> <laughs> throw them bows. Yeah. That's she says satisfied. Satiated satisfied as one's appetite or desires to point or boredom. I don't know. Like because sometimes you're like sometimes you have to ask yourself, Dion can call me out. He'd be like, I mean, are you hungry? Are you full? Or like, cause I just I am a snacker. Like I just graze at whatever and Dion be like, but are you hungry? And I'm like, nobody asked you. I will say with you is you, you eat fast. I do eat fast. And I think that caused me to eat a lot, like to the point beyond fullness. I and and here's my thing. I'm not saying you do this, but when I eat fast is ugh, this is a fat thing to say. When I eat fast is because I know that my body is going to get full soon and I see that I can have seconds. So I'm like, ooh, oh. if I eat fast, my body, the, the by the time the food gets to the place where it makes me full, I'm I've already had the second plate or whatever. Like oh, well, you see like an option, like I want to try everything. I you ever went to like a, a buffet and you like I'm gonna get this big ass salad first. You know what I'm saying? I gotta eat healthy first. And you like, nah. If, if I keep eating the salad, I'm, I'm gonna get full. So let me just go and put this. Like, hey, wait, you can take this bowl. I'm gonna get this steak and potatoes. And oh, I ain't gonna have pizza. Let me get steak, potato, pizza, and there's a mashed potato. Man, they, 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 this is all going good together. You can be like, I'm getting too full. I know they had like a, a, a bat. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you just gathering foods just because like I I'm almost there. I'm almost full. So I'm just I'm just drinking food. And just like, oh, I am full. Yeah. Let's sit here. Let's just settle for a second because I got to get the ice cream with the brownie. I ain't know they had the microwave over there. I could put the sprinkles on that too. Let me go ahead and do I that. I think my eating fast is one, a habit. Like I've always been that way. My dad's always been like, slow down. But then like I do like get to the point where I've been a lot better lately in the past couple of years of like being cognizant and trying to slow down. But it's always because I feel like you know, like I got to get on to the next thing or, you know, and it's just like one of those mechanical things you don't even realize that you're doing is not necessarily to get a second plate. I'm good. Like mm -hmm. It's always just like, and now I'm done. Food time is over, but like not allowing myself to like enjoy the food or like in France, they like savor the food and it's an experience. Mm -hmm. But to your point about like being at a buffet, I had to, I think two years ago I had an aha moment because Thanksgiving is one of those experiences where you're like, it's just so much food. I want to taste it. But guess what? Most of the time, Thanksgiving, I cook. Like, So it's not like I'm at somebody's house. I'm like, girl, this food is not going anywhere. Right. Right. And guess what? You can make it again like, yeah. if you really want it. So like, I think that two years ago was the first Thanksgiving where I literally had one plate at the first sit down. And then maybe something i had something later that day for like the like dinner or whatever and then did it again last year and i was just like yeah but well, also when it. you cook you you typically taste your own food so you're pretty much getting a, a yeah. small portion um i cook this so often that i don't have to you think it's like you're a good cook I have. good cooks don't measure their food i don't always measure food but that's because I made it often enough that I know exactly how much goes in there. If I haven't made it often enough, then it's a science because cooking is a science. You ever you ever made a dish and then you accidentally added too much salt? 
Mm. And he's like, well, I guess I'm cooking the whole bag of potatoes. Because well, like, I think before you do that, before you do that, like there's certain things like you might be like, let me put a little lime or a little sugar. There's certain ways that you can like lemon or sugar or something can offset. Really? And if you were a good cook, you would know these things. Like there's certain things that you can You're still just, absorbing the amount of sodium that you actually I mean there's I'm just saying like I'm not saying if you put a whole bag of salt up in there, but if like, you like the top comes off of something, you'd be like, ah oh, okay. like, shoot, you'd be like, that's yeah, no. that's half of the potatoes. Of course you can kind of scoop the top off right and, and, and handle it, but it's like it's yeah. it's in liquid. And it's like, ah, that's okay. in water. It's like, yeah. well, I guess I'm making then a I'm big ass bowl of, of mashed potatoes. Definitely doubling. Yeah. 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 For sure. And it's like, yeah, you're just a little, a little salty. Would you, how much salt are you put? Ah, you still can use the taste that? Yeah, I was trying something different. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, let's see what we left off at. Uh, so at, the, at that point, Imagine Twills popping up. So up, up uh, popping up upside the head. Why are you even at a buffet if you're practicing balance and control? So don't be at a buffet. Who me? Yeah, in the future. Oh, I haven't been in a buffet in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it make it if making excess if making excuses and exceptions before the actual scenario is this setting yourself up for failure. Question. Just thinking, yeah. That's a good question. I'm asking you the question she's asking. Oh, I thought you were about to answer it because you read it. Uh, um, I do think that like I don't I think setting up excuses ahead of time is setting yourself up for failure. You have to, but I do think you want to be prepared for the scenario. So if you're like, if I'm at a buffet, I'm gonna get the salad, some baked chicken. Exclusively, yeah, only. yeah, yeah. Um, like I know a lot of people who a lot of my friends like will look at the menu before we go out. So then, like, if we're going out to eat, I'm going to make a decision, I'm not going to be surprised. Let me see what the menu is. On my daughter's birthday, um, she wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory, and immediately I was like, I'm getting cheesecake. <laughs> I'm getting cheesecake because I haven't had cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory ever. I've only had cheesecake from the freezer. Oh. Frozen. I never had cheesecake at Cheesecake Factory. Oh, they didn't know that. Yeah. So, and cheesecake is my top three desserts, right? Mm -hmm. So, in my head, oh my God, there's so many options. You know, the cheesecake menu is thick. Got that BBL. Um, so I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, so many options. I can get a burger. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. I want to get a burger. No, no, no. I should get the chicken strips. No, no, no. And then Brooklyn was like, can I have a Caesar salad? And I was like, <clears throat> I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. I have the cop salad, please. And I was like, man, so you want the dinner or the lunch? I said, I'll take the dinner. It's like I came here to eat. Yeah. <laughs> going, uh, I'm going to get some calories. I'm going to get this portion control. Um, uh, but yeah, but on the flip side, they had said, you need anything else? Bread, because I'm hungry. Because, because uh, you know, I, I, I was fasting. Uh, you know, it was, I picked her up at 12.55. So, you know, picking her up at that time, she had to get to the car. Um, you know, going to the, the Grove to get the Cheesecake yeah. Factory. By this time, it's like 1.30. Right. So I'm like, I'm hungry. And they're like, you want to get bread, man? Bring some bread out. I'm hungry, bro. And I was throwing them mugs back. And I, and, you know, <laughs> and when the salad came out, I split one of the bread, you know, the brown bread, scoop that mug open, open that mug up, salad inside. I had myself a little sub. You remember we had a we we've done this at was it cheesecake or grand lux with the bread? Oh, you and I? Yeah. Did what? I just remember like this was at a time when we were like getting in shape or in shape or whatever. And I just remember you like going in on the bread and me being like, Hey friend. Yeah. Calm down. That's the worst. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. The worst feeling I had in my life. I'm getting teary-eyed because 
it felt like I was an alcoholic. Oh no. So it was a crew of us in this minivan on, on this production job. Um, the production job with Joanne, I can't think what it was, what job it was. Um, so it was a crew, it was camera guy, sound guy, producer, PA, we're all in the truck together in minivan. And we're all talking about our struggles. This one guy was like, man, I'm, I love women, man. I've been single all my life. I don't think I'd ever be getting married. And he said, I love women. I love being promiscuous and, you know, being blah, blah, blah. One is like, I have a problem with smoking weed. I have a problem with this and this. I have a problem with smoking weed. And then this is this is me at my smallest. I was like, I have a problem knowing when to say no when it comes to like snacks and candies. Cause it's like, I'll, I'll keep going until I need to, to, get full. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know that I can't get full eating Skittles and it's like, wow, you eat that? If I have the opportunity, I will. Now we're wrapping up. We're coming back from Glendale, something like mm-hmm. that. So we had like a little while, a ways to go. We're driving back and then uh, one of the, the the place that we were at was like, hey, you guys can have this uh, bucket of candy. And they put the bucket of candy. I'm not driving. I'm in the back seat. Someone's driving, driving. It was a producer, audio guy, camera guy, and me. And I was like, oh. And this is a conversation that happened like five, six hours ago. Yeah. So I went in, I started grabbing stuff. And um, it was evening, it was kind of like, like you know, we're listening to music, we're doing a car karaoke. And I went in again. And it was kind of, I'm going, I'm going. And I probably went back like four or five times where I just kept uh-huh. snacking. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, the camera guy was like, took the bag and was like, Got to know when to say when, bro. Dang. And I was like, I didn't even notice yeah. that I was doing it. Yeah. And then he was just like, it's enough. Got to know when to say when. As in like, I heard your, I heard your yeah. pain. I got you, bro. Yeah. And I was like, I was so embarrassed. Because like, I totally forgot we had this conversation. Yeah. And I was like. And I and I and I was like I was I was about to say I don't have a problem, like trying to like yeah. like 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 no yeah. no I didn't have that much. Or yeah. I was like I was about to fight him, like yeah. like argue with him, like yo I, it wasn't it wasn't a lot, like but I don't I, you know you see the, the amount of rappers in your cargo pants that you did stuff. He's like, it was it was a lot. Yeah. But it, it, and then I was immediately on like this fight or flight mode of. Like, well, what about you? Like, trying to, like, you know, trying yeah. to figure out a way, like, well, I'm going to be on YouTube. Like, yeah. I was trying out in my head, like, I can't retaliate. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. This is this is a problem. Right. And that hurt me, dude. Yeah. That hurt me. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I can still see his face. That's love, though. Love <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the one out of here, man. Time to go? Yeah. You spilled your heart? It's time to go? Man, my titty's sweating right now. Oh, my. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, Couldn't go to Jack in the Box. My man boobs are over right now, and it's a gutter of sweat right here because they flapping over onto my stomach, and there's a it's a it's a, it's a crease in my stomach and my breast, Thanks. and it's sweating. And now the sweat is starting to leak. All right, okay, all right, guys. I'm so sorry that you all had to get that description from Dion. Um but yeah we've been gone for two weeks but we back we up back. in this piece. No one knew we were gone for two weeks. Everybody knew they were like when's the new podcast? Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Hear what she said. We were upset. I heard from somewhere to think of your body as the one and only car you'll ever own in in your life. Would you let it sit and rot and or would you take care so you could keep driving? Mm. Facts. It absolutely mm. helps to think about it just like that moment because we ourselves can excuse to the point of awfulness. Yeah. Moya said, nope, let's stay in this vulnerable combo. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability is your one and only friend when it comes to your own body. You can make excuses till the end of time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, honestly, you, it is, I'm learning, like, it's a constant journey. Like, obviously, I'm learning. This is, like, um, a new journey for consistency for me. Uh, 
to myself, to give myself time. Like I can work all day. My work schedule is like, usually I do like nine to six, but sometimes I stay to seven. And then I come home and I do like, I try to get an hour and a half or two for lactose. And then I have Spanish class. And then like, then I go to sleep and then get up and do it again. And that's a very hectic schedule and they say, or a very full schedule. And then people like to remind you that you need to get enough sleep and that you need to get exercise. And what mm-hmm. I realized is that I'm willing to do all these things for other people, me, mm-hmm. myself. I'm willing to do these things for other people, but I'm not willing to give myself time. So like Deanna and I did a, what I call the vision walk one day when we just went for a walk yep. and we started talking about like, Life. And what are your life, life goals? And what do you want out of life? And what does that life look like? Um, a life coach did this for me. And it's like, what, when you're, um, you know, like, what do you see your schedule like? Where are you sitting? What does your house look like? All these type of things. And then in that, we both discover, like, we both have this desire to wake up early, pray, work out, meditate, you know, like have this early morning routine. And then all the other, and then of course, all the other dreams and stuff that you have. But my aha moment was like, hey, I can actually control what time I wake up. I can get up at five. So mm-hmm. if I want my life to look like I wake up at five o'clock, work out, pray, worship, do that part in the morning, and then get ready at work, being ready for work, guess what? I can do that. Mm-hmm. That's one Just thing I can control. I just have to like, it does entail getting to bed by a certain time, but it also like, and it reminds me to like, hey, this is your time, Twilla. Like, this is the only time of the day that you truly get to do something for you. Mm-hmm. So do it. So No interruptions. No interruptions. My days, I don't always win at waking up. It's a new thing for me, but my days go so much better when I wake up at that time. Mm-hmm. Like I get so much more done. My late day feels fulfilled. I'm not miserable because I feel like my whole life is at work. Cause mm-hmm. sometimes that's what I get mad at. Like, man, all my time is here at the office. Right. I actually like my job, but it's just frustrating that like you don't have your own time. Right. It's like, but if you wake up early, you have your own time. Yeah. And I'll even on my alarm, I call it me and Jesus time. Mm-hmm. And to the point, like, I feel like I'm off when I don't do it or that I'm doing something wrong when I don't do it because I'm ignoring myself. Yeah. A lot of times, man, we got to, I don't know how important your phone is, but I think your phone needs to be far away from your bed. Yeah, I agree. You can sleep with your watch. I put my stuff on do not disturb. Yeah. So I don't even want my watch on. But, uh, but like if it's a call, I will check on it. I can hang up on it. But a lot of times, if I'm near my phone in the bed, Instagram. Yeah. Like five o'clock in the morning. What did I miss? Who did I, who texted yeah. me? But if it's far away, I'd be like, I got to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's my thing at night. You don't have issues going to sleep the same way I have issues going oh, to sleep. Boy. But like I was telling my sister, I was like, going to bed. I don't know what it is. Like, I'll do something like I'll do a, like Duolingo and then like a little, a few like mind exercises before, like at night. That's usually part of my routine. Um, and I try to do that before a certain time. But then, like, when I'm like, okay, it's time to go to bed, it's something like I might want to play a game or I want to scroll. And I know I'm sleepy. Now the phone is falling on my face. Mm-hmm. And then when it falls on my face, I don't just like, take it and put it aside on the charger. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I pick it back up and yeah. I'm going to start doing it. I'm like, girl, yeah. why? Yeah. Why? Who? Yeah. What are you trying to prove yeah. by scrolling through this phone and like not falling asleep? Like, go to bed, put yeah. the phone down and yeah, chill out. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good time, y'all. So it's a process. Yeah. Uh, Moyo said, keep a meal journal. That is big. Helps like writing everything you eat down. Uh, Spicy said, all the best on your health journey. I, I struggle with the sweets too. When you go back and look at it, you're like, dang, I don't worry about 
the changes first. See the changes you want, need, then plan to change, plan the changes to counteract where the weak spots. Yeah, for that mill journal, like, yeah, it does help. That's a very good point. Like, and I've been hearing people say that, like, write down everything that you eat throughout mm -hmm. the day. Don't try to modify it. Don't be like, this is my diet food. Like, be brutally yeah. honest with yourself. Like, if you like, I went to Jack in the Box, I went to Jack in the, Jack in the Box and write down what you ate. Mm -hmm. Um, are you are you cool telling about what you ate today? Yeah. What you eat? Um, everything. Everything I ate. So I had um, a half of a cheesecake protein bowl, um, which is yogurt with a little cream cheese protein powder, um, strawberry, and uh, some graham crackers. Not too many, less than a serving of graham crackers. So that's what I had. That was my first meal of the day. And then lunch, I had chicken sausage um, and like a, was an egg scramble um, with a half an avocado, which is a lot of fats, but I did have a half avocado. And then- um, Coffee, uh, drink. Hold on. I had Cheez-Its. I had a small thing of Cheez-Its. Where did cheese come from? Right here in your house. Mm. Uh, half, a half a thing of Cheez-Its. And then I had- um, Tea, mint tea to drink today. And I had like, I'll have my thing of water with me, but I had four of those so far, mm. which is, I want to say 80 ounces. Mm. How about you? I had everything you had. Uh, not the Cheez-Its. I had the che uh, cheesecake thing that you made and I had the sausage, <sighs> sausage, chicken sausage, mm -hmm. eggs, and the avocado. Yep. I um, went over to see Brookie and he had Little Caesars. You didn't get none? I didn't. Okay. I looked right at it and said, ooh, no. Them, was it Crazy Puffs? Oh, yeah, I got those right there. <laughs> um, mm. I'm the worst at going to sleep night owl. Same here. That dopamine is mad strong with the phone use. Yeah, the quick that quick fix is totally addictive. There's a lot of stuff with the moon, the blue light, and also for that. I would suggest to monitor for I didn't see how many weeks because it's behind the heart, and then revisit for modifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Food journal. I think that's something we should start yeah, incorporating for sure. this week. All right, y'all. All right. Deanne's ready to go. I'm exhausted. So we're out. And I'm hungry. There you go. So it's time to go. I've got an hour to eat. All right, folks. Thank you so much uh, for joining us for our podcast. What's this podcast? The Baldy Locks Podcast. I'm Twilla. I'm Dion Lack. And until next time, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave comments. Two in the pink, one in the stink. So it was good to catch up with you last month. Zup, I was thinking about you. I was like, when's the last time we seen you? So I'm glad you hopped on today. It's exciting. Oh, Dion's computer is about to die on top of that. So we really are leaving. Talk to y'all later next week, next Saturday. Say bye, Dion. Be a good friend. Two in the pink. No, stop. <laughs> Happy Easter.